Today I'm talking with John Peterson. John, how you doing? All right, Dave. Good to see you again. Uh, are you uh, enjoying the Pittsburgh Code Camp? I love it. Uh, it's the first time I've been to Pittsburgh. And, uh, Wait, Philly. this is the first time you've been to Pittsburgh? First time. How is that possible? Well, I mean, there's Philadelphia. And nobody from Pittsburgh really trusts the folks from Philadelphia anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so you're saying it was their choice. It was know, Pittsburgh's choice I'm, not to allow you in? I'm very honored that they, they uh, <laughs> that that Dave, uh, that Dave Horster uh, uh, selected my presentations to uh, present and uh, this is a great this is a great place uh, I'm enjoying myself too and it turns out that you and I were speaking on similar topics I did an intro to ASB.NBC and one of your two talks was what well one of uh, to dovetail into what you said it was uh, I, I entitled it extending uh, ASP NBC applications with Ajax jQuery and JSON but uh, but these things are all included uh, with with the ASP ASP framework anyway. So it was really more about implementing those features. Implementing uh, the features of JSON, uh, AJAX, and jQuery. Right. Okay. Not necessarily with NBC. It happened to be that your samples were using NBC. Uh, correct. In fact, I had a good question toward the end of the session. It was about, well, I, if I'm a web forms developer, can I use these things? Which is like, absolutely. Yeah. You absolutely can use these things. Okay. You threw them off a little bit with the title of that. Just I like, did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, of course, I, I reminded everybody in the session that ASP NBC is built on web forms. It right. really is built on web forms and uh, uh, it's quite a different implementation but it is uh, system.web is there nonetheless. Yeah, it opened up the, uh, the web config file in MVC, MVC project. The MVC project, it's hard to tell but it's not a web form for you. Right. There's only a couple of lines that are different. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about those technologies. Sure, uh, sure. Ajax, jQuery. Well, first of all, let me ask you, uh, kind of back up a little bit. The reason I think that you, uh, you, you're doing your demo in MVC is because MVC, I'm a big fan of MVC. I like it a lot. I like the simplicity of it. I like the control of it. But it does, you do lose some things with MVC. Uh, you do. And uh, for those reasons, I like it too, that it's, it's very simple. It's very clean. Uh, I was never, I never really got heavily into web forms. And I gravitated right to uh, MVC. Very easy to follow, very clean, and for the same reasons I like it. But yes, we all the whiz bang Telerik user controls and component one controls and things like that. We don't have those in a. We can't put those in a uh, in a ASP MVC view. We cannot do that. Now these are the things that we just can drag from a toolbox, and they just plain work. Right. We don't have. You know. We don't now. It, it, it's not an absolute uh, rule uh, because it, as long as your user control doesn't require a view state, you actually can use it inside of an ASP MVC view. It just so happens that most of them do require view state. So, uh, but that's okay. You're not totally out of the uh, uh, out of luck there because you can simply include an, a, a a web forms page in your MVC application hmm. very easily. Okay. Um, but if you don't want to do that, right. you want to stick with MVC, then Ajax, jQuery, JSON, these are these are good technologies to sort of make up for the things that we're, uh, put thicker quotes, giving up right. with MVC. Right, and, and uh, you know, of course one of the criticisms is that you, know, you do need to get into some code uh, to, to, to utilize these things, but on the plus side of it, it's actually not that much code. And fortunately we have jQuery, uh, which their site is jQuery.com, and it's a helpful resource to go to. And in fact, there are three three good websites: jQuery, jQuery UI, and jQuery our the, uh, jQuery Theme Roller or jQuery.com/themeroller. It is all these sites together are great resources because they show us how to use jQuery. They show us how to create widgets that are already prepackaged and consume those uh, in a, in any type of web environment. And for the Theme Roller. Basically, utilizing CSS, cascading style sheets, great resources. Okay. Can you walk me through how um, I can enhance an application sure. using jQuery, Ajax? Sure, sure. Well, uh, many of the things that you need are already in the box uh, with with MVC. Um, the script, there's a script folder. You know, when you create a project in MVC, uh, there is a there is a script folder that has uh, the JavaScript that you would need, uh, the the MVC Ajax, uh, the jQuery files and they're in the script folder but you don't have direct access to them by default in, in an application and if we're talking about a 
just an application right out of the box using the default project template. Um, like uh, web forms, our project or our forms template or our view template is SiteMaster. So we have to at least somewhere in a specific view, an ASPX page, or in our site master, we have to reference those script sources. So once we have told MVC that this is where jQuery is, this is where our AJAX script files are, um, and perhaps our ca certain cascading style sheets and other things, then we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And for this code camp, and I think it's going to be available to anybody regardless of whether they attended the code camp, my presentation will, will show those, where those script files are, and how you consume those. And once you've done that, your application is ready to go. Okay, now you say when you consume them, you're always adding a link to the top of your master page, or maybe to every page that you see user. Right, uh, if, you, uh, if, you, uh, your, if your view inherits from the site master, which typically they will, uh, then if you were to say open up your page in, you know, in the browser, uh, or using Firebug, with Firefox, you, know, you would see that all those script files would be coming along for the ride. You'd have access to jQuery. Uh, so now I've got access to jQuery, and how am I going to use it to make my application better? Well, uh, you know, a good example, and I think a common thing that we have in all of our applications, somewhere along the way, we, we need dates. Uh, you know, we, we, we capture dates, all kinds of business dates and things like that. So I use this in my example today, and uh, one of the cool Widgets, jQuery UI widgets is the date picker, uh -huh. and it's a drop-down calendar. It's it's a tr it's a pop-up calendar, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a beautiful interface. Uh, it's very configurable because it's all powered by CSS, and there's uh, actually the one that I use is called the time picker, which extends the date picker. It has a time component to mm -hmm. it, and so really all you have to do to consume this is to simply add some script to the top of your page to basically load. Uh, to load up when the page loads, and all you need to do is name your text box that holds your date field, you know, your date data, something, and just tell jQuery for this object, apply the time picker, and there's some parameters that you set, and then when the page loads and you click into your, you click into that text box, you're all set to go. It, I make it sound very easy, and it actually is very easy. Uh, my code samples show it, but also you can go to the jQuery UI site and there's all kinds of demos out there that will show you how to use it. I've been outside. I really like the samples on that site. Uh, how, about, uh, how about Ajax? Well, Ajax is really useful when you have different sections of your page and you don't necessarily want to render the entire page back. That can get quite expensive at times. So, you know, perhaps you just want to render a portion of your page back. Well. Fortunately, MVC provides us with Ajax helpers. We can create an Ajax form, and then you simply, instead of HTML.begin form, you just do Ajax.begin form. And there's a variety of samples on that. And then the beauty is the controller method that you invoke, when it's returning, it's just going to return to a div tag that you specify in your form parameter so that the entire page is not getting posted back, just a little piece. And this certainly helps with performance on your, you know, on your application. You know, if it's a small page, it doesn't really matter that the whole thing is posted back, but, you know, but maybe you have a lot of data and you're only affecting a small piece of it. Why yeah, render the whole me, page back? Give me an example of what uh, application we might use that. Um, you know, you may have a, I mean, you may have one view that has four distinct different areas, and so it's four distinct forms, and if I am, if I'm only affecting data in one area, I don't want to send all the data back. Okay. And so what this allows me to do, too, is to create methods that can act on a very specific set of data. So the cohesion of my methods, it, it's, 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 it's much more cohesive and fine-tuned to what we'd say the single, you know, single responsibility theory in, in solid development. Okay. Uh, what else? Anybody else tell us? Uh, well, I did a little bit on the JSON, uh, oh, yeah, JSON, JSON today. So define JSON. What is that? Uh, well, well, JSON stands for J uh, JavaScript Object Notation. And so the, the, the whole part of the talk today was, you know, we have jQuery as this over, overall library that allows us to do postbacks um, with JavaScript. And we use Ajax to uh, enhance performance in terms of not having to render the entire page back. But what if you're just working with data? What if you just want to stream data to your page, not specifically content? Well, 
JSON allows us to stream data from a controller uh, to our browser, and it can be a collection of data, like a list, okay. a list of states. The example I showed today was a list of states with properties of the order in which they joined the union, the date they joined, their capital, um, the name of the state, and basically the JavaScript just cycles through all that and just builds a table. And again, it just demonstrates that if all you want to do is stream data uh, and, and have it consumed by your JavaScript and then have it placed on your page in a certain area, you can do it. And it's very, very specific and very precise in what it does. And so I sort of lumped all those things together in one cohesive set of examples to show folks, here's how you can add more capabilities and functions to your ASP MVC applications. Okay. Uh, well, that's great. It's just these are relatively simple to use tools that can enhance their application and make it a lot more interactive. Uh, I, absolutely, and with the advent of jQuery, uh, the having to not navigate the HTML document object model is not as foreboding as it once was, so sure. it's much easier now. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to talk to us? I don't know. Tell me uh, about John Peterson. Where can people find out more about you? Well, uh, I'm Philly based. I'm a Philly based uh, application developer. Uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years or so. Took a little detour to go to law school, practice law for a while. Oh, you're a lawyer. <laughs> Yes. The, uh, yes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not holding that against. No, that's okay. I appreciate that. I am. I'm not a practicing lawyer anymore. So uh, I do. Uh, big interests for me are open source, open source licensing, and and uh, sort of the intersection of open source technology and um, uh, uh, the law and how it impacts us as developers and things like that. Uh, do you have an online presence? I do. Uh, I'm actually a, a blogger on Los Techies. Okay. Uh, so the, the crew down there with uh, Rod Paddock is down there now. Uh, this is uh, you know, Chad Myers and Jeremy, Jeremy Miller and uh, uh, just, uh, Jason Meredith and uh, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of folks down there that typically are centered in the Austin area. Uh, but I was, very, I, was, I was very honored and pleased that they uh, had, uh, had uh, entertained my inquiry about joining them because I really think they're a great presence on the web. The names that I know on that list are smart people. Yes, and, and, and they're doing some really cool things. So I am the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, one of, I'm the East Coast uh, representation, <laughs> but I'm not the farthest east. Uh, 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 James Gregory, who created uh, Fluent and Hibernate from the UK, huh. is a Los Techies blogger okay. as well. John, thank you very much. I really well, appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me on Technology and Friends. It's very appropriate for me because uh, most of my friends are in technology, it seems, and I can never get away from it. And it's actually more fun than uh, more fun than ever. And actually, I would have to say that technology now is my friend. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs>